Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're gonna to talk about how you use dual SIM on an iPhone. Now, a few years ago when Apple announced dual SIM was gonna be possible on an iPhone, I was excited. I immediately set it up because I always had two lines, one for personal and one for my business. And there's, has, I've used dual SIM phones in the past, but you know the experience was always maybe questionable depending on the device. There were issues sometimes. Um, and then the, it was mostly Android phones that had that capability. And a lot of times I am switching back and forth between Android and iPhone, but primarily I carry an iPhone. So I made a video a few years ago talking about dual SIM. And so in this video, I wanna talk about how to use it, but I also wanna talk about having several years of experience with dual SIM on the iPhone and what that looks like. So I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max right here. Of course, it's a dual SIM phone. The last few years of uh, iPhones have been dual SIM capable. And so what that means is that you can have two phone lines coming to the phone and receive calls and make texts from two different phone numbers uh, almost at the same time. I mean, you can't uh, make phone calls from uh, the same from two different numbers at the same time, but you can make a call from one number and then make your next call from another number. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what that experience is like, and then we'll talk about uh, how to set that up and what that looks like based on the carrier that you're going with and uh, just some things to, to look out for. I've definitely had to figure out some things over the last couple years as I've switched from different phones and even switched between different carriers for a dual SIM on my phone. So this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. When the iPhone 13 comes out, which uh, is actually coming out today, which probably in a couple weeks will become available, I'll switch both of my dual SIMs over to that phone. Um, and that process involves having two different lines. They don't even have to be with the same carrier. Now, when I first started using dual SIM, I had AT&T, and then I also had Google Fi for another line. And Google Fi essentially is very similar to T-Mobile. They use the same uh, towers and all of that good stuff, but Google Fi is from Google, and it's pretty easy to set up and pretty inexpensive, which is why I went with it. Now, dual SIM means that you can have two lines coming to your phone. It also means that you can have two different data uh, accounts coming to your phone. So if you utilize a lot of data, that might also be a good use case for having dual SIM. These days we have unlimited data, but unlimited data becomes throttled when you go over a certain amount of data. So if you had a second line on your phone, you could switch over to that other line uh, as far as it being your primary data line, and then that line would start to utilize data and you'd have unthrottled data until you ran that line out of its unlimited data and hit the cap. So uh, let's talk about why you would want dual SIM. Well, uh, if you're like me, you have a primary line that's your personal line and you have a business line uh, or some other line and you, you don't want to carry around two phones. That was something that I had to do for the longest time was carry around two phones. While uh, I, I sometimes still do that because I test out a lot of devices on this channel, it's nice to have one phone that has both of those lines coming to it all of the contacts and everything else right in the phone. So with dual SIM, that makes it pretty easy, but you do have to have two different lines. So I utilize two different carriers, but you don't have to do that. You can utilize the same carrier. AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, and uh, well, anything that uh, T-Mobile has swallowed up, such as Sprint, they all support dual SIM on this phone. So if you go and get a second line, all you'll have to tell them is that you need an eSIM for that second line. Now, the little uh, card slot, the SIM card slot on your phone still only supports one physical SIM, which means you put a physical SIM in and then you put a, another SIM uh, in via a digital format. Now, that's where it gets a little tricky. The carriers uh, have a hard time giving out the information for you to manually enter in uh, that information. They want you to scan the little QR code that comes on essentially the same little business card sized SIM card um, 
uh, that they would give you otherwise and you scan that in. And that's been the tricky process for me. Anytime that I move to a different phone, I typically have to go into a carrier store so that I can have them give me a new business card, essentially like a business card with a QR code on it for me to scan so that I could bring that second line over to my new phone. It hasn't always been that easy. The physical SIM has always been pretty easy. You could just simply take that SIM card out, put it in your other phone, and the carriers tend to update that automatically. You almost don't even have to call them or anything. You just take your SIM card out, put it in the other phone. But with the digital SIM, you do often have to go in. Um, I have had them offer to ship me one, but then they have to activate it to that and then ship it to you. And however long it takes for that card to get to me, my number is going to be attached to that SIM card that I don't have access to or that eSIM that I don't have access to and uh, my line could be active and people could be trying to call it for a few days while I wait to get that in. So there are ways around going into the store. They will send you the card in the mail. It just takes time. So is there any benefit to utilizing a different carrier than uh, your main line. So for me, like I said, I have Verizon and I also have Google Fi. Now, the only real reason that I do that is because my secondary line I don't use for data. I just want it for calls and texts. And so I don't need to spend a bunch of money, 40, 50, whatever dollars on another line that has unlimited data. I could just use Google Fi and get an inexpensive line for 15 or 20 bucks that will go on my phone and I don't have to have any data. Uh, now I can use data on that line. The way that Google Fi works on that plan is that they charge you for the data that you use and if you don't use any data then they don't charge you. Since I don't have uh, data switching turned on in the phone and the phone settings, I never use any data so I never pay more than whatever that is, 15 or 20 bucks. Um, it's, it's $15 because I have a few other lines on Google Fi, but if you only have one line on Google Fi, I believe it's $20. And Google Fi does have other plans out now that include uh, unlimited, um, just like all the other carriers do. But their pricing isn't nearly as good if you go that, that route. So for me, I've chosen Verizon as my main line because Verizon provides the best coverage where I'm at up here in northwestern Montana. When I uh, lived in California, I, would, I was fine on AT&T. I never felt a need to switch over to Verizon. And when I did switch over to Verizon before moving up here, I didn't really notice any difference. I think I liked AT&T better for that area where I lived at the time. But uh, Google Fi being T-Mobile gets you any coverage that you would have T-Mobile uh, anywhere else. And so for me, that works out because I don't need the second line to be as strong as the first line if I'm going you know, out into the wilderness or whatever or driving outside of town where there might be gaps between coverage between the town that I was in and the next town over. I don't mind my second line dipping out. I'm still going to have coverage on my first line. I'm still going to have data, but my second line just becomes inaccessible. And there even has been times where Verizon has been inaccessible and I've had coverage on the, um, on the Google Fi line, essentially T-Mobile. And there are settings in your phone that you can switch over your data between the two. So if your main went out and then all of a sudden you didn't have any data, you can switch over to your backup. So we're going to dive in and look at the settings so that you can kind of see how this works. Uh, I'm going to record my screen here and then you can see the settings that I have uh, that, that are accessible on our, our phones to change. So you can go into settings. So I'm just going to type in settings and there is a cellular tab right here. Now you'll see that I have primary and business. Those are the two different lines and you can label them accordingly. So that way when you get a phone call it says, you know, P for primary, B for business, or the first letter of whatever it is that um, uh, you set these as. You can see up at the top that I have my cellular data set on primary. That means that my primary line, which is my Verizon line, is the line in which the phone is going to use for data. But I can also switch this to business or switch this to the other line and I can also allow uh, cellular data switching as well. Now this basically means that 
if you are using data and then you get out of range on one line, it's going to switch over to the other line. Um, I do believe that it will prioritize one, but as you can see here with the little description below, coverage and availability is what uh, is the deciding factor there. You can also turn on and off your, um, your personal hotspot uh, just like you can in uh, the normal setting. You set your default voice line. And essentially what default voice line means is that when you go to the phone app, which line is it going to choose first? So primary, I usually use my phone for making personal calls more so than business calls, and so default voice line to primary. Now under cellular plans, uh, under primary, here's where I could choose my label. And so it has uh, several built-in labels that you can choose from, and then I could type in a custom label. I can turn this line on or off. So for example, my secondary line, if I wanna turn it off on the weekends and not have access to it at all, I could simply toggle that line off. So if you do uh, utilize this second line for maybe being on call or something like that, or it's for work and you don't want any calls to come through over the weekend, you could simply turn that line off, which is nice. You just have to remember to turn it back on. Uh, you can see here my number, I can turn on and off Wi-Fi calling. Calls on other devices is that feature on an iPhone that allows you to accept calls on your Mac, uh, MacBook Pro, Mac laptop, whatever, and your iPad. And then some of these other settings are gonna come in by default, like voice and data, 5G auto, data mode, allow more data on 5G, uh, roaming, carrier services, and SIM pen and all that stuff. So let's go down to the secondary line. Now the secondary line, all of these settings look pretty much the same. Uh, Google Fi uh, up here is LTE. There's no 5G anywhere around, so voice and data are going to be LTE. You can see that the network uh, selection is Google Fi, um, and uh, everything looks pretty much the same. Uh, you can see there's also a low data mode uh, as well, which helps reduce cellular data usage. And so if I didn't want to use much data on this line, and I was using that cell data switching, um, I can enable this one so that Google Fi would utilize less data and wouldn't because I'm paying for data as I use the data. So this might be a good option if I had that turned on. So down below, you can see the cellular data uh, for the primary line. This is all normal stuff. It can show you what apps are available to utilize data. Um, so that's nothing different down below. But these settings here are what enable you to utilize your dual SIM functionality. Uh, if you wanted to set this up, you can see here I have two set up, but add cellular plan shows up below. This would show up for you on your phone, being that you only have a single line right now. You'd hit add cellular plan, and then your phone would pop up looking for that QR code uh, that you would scan, and that QR code would be on the little card that you would get from your carrier, whether it be in-store or uh, if they send it to you in the mail. So it's pretty easy to set up and manage dual SIM on the iPhone. Uh, now we're gonna take a look at uh, how it looks to utilize dual SIM on an iPhone. So you can see up at the top right hand corner that I have bars that are split. The top level of bars is gonna be for my primary and the bottom level is going to be for my secondary line. If I swipe over from the side, you can see that I have a Verizon and Google Fi and I can see the level of service that I have with each. If I go into my phone app and go to the keypad, you can see that I have a primary and a business tag up top. And so depending on what line I wanna make the call with, I just simply choose use primary or use business and the phone is going to uh, utilize that line to make the phone call. Alternatively, when I receive a call, it's also gonna tell me whether or not that call is coming in on primary or business. When you're looking at a contact, you can also see right underneath it whether it was last used usually utilizing the business line or the primary line. And so uh, the phone even reminds you which line you primarily use for communicating with this person. When you send a new text message to someone and you type in their number, you can choose whether or not to send that text message with primary or the secondary line. And so you just simply tap there, and then when you go in and send your message, that text message will be sent uh, through primary or secondary, depending on the line that you choose. Now, if you are on an iPhone, both lines will be able to utilize iMessage. 
I typed in a fake number here, which of course uh, Apple can't recognize as an iMessage line, and so it basically just uh, you know goes green. But you should be able to utilize iMessage on both lines if uh, you're text messaging someone who is also on an iPhone. If you're trying to message someone and it, it won't show up as an iMessage, you know the other person has an iPhone and so do you, then you need to go into your Messages app here and make sure that Send and Receive is set to both of those phone numbers that are on your phone. Send and Receive and iMessage has to be turned on for both lines to be enabled to use iMessage. If one is turned on and one is not turned on, then when you use the one that's not turned on, your phone is gonna default to standard text messaging and you're gonna get the green bubbles. If you want people to be able to FaceTime you on both lines, you also have to go into the FaceTime settings and enable FaceTime for both of those lines. Uh, by default, it may or may not enable, so these are things that you're definitely going to want to check out to make sure that you're able to send iMessage using both lines, and if you want to be able to be FaceTimed on both lines, have FaceTime enabled as well. So dual SIM is a really great feature on the iPhone, and it makes it really nice because now we don't have to carry around separate phones. You can have two lines on your phone for relatively inexpensive. If you're like me, utilize a main carrier that has the best coverage in your area, uh, that, that provides you the data package that you need, and then get an inexpensive line. If you can't get an inexpensive line as that secondary line from the carrier, the same carrier, then go with a different carrier like I did, such as Google Fi, where you can get an inexpensive line. I've got a link down in the description below where you can sign up for Google Fi and, uh, and give it a try. I think they've got um, a, a free week or something like that, or they've got promos going on all the time. So it makes it really easy to set that up. Uh, what you do have to do for Google Fi is use the SIM card for Google Fi uh, and then use the eSIM for your main line. So that's the tricky part. Google Fi doesn't support the eSIM. And so I actually have a Google Fi SIM card in this phone. And then I have Verizon as the eSIM. And I set the eSIM as primary and I set the Google Fi, which is the SIM card, as secondary. So you can still go in and set these things and move them around as you need them to work for your phone. So that's one of the things that I really like about the iPhone is having that flexibility. That's something that I haven't been able to find on other Android phones, especially Samsung phones, which here in the US have promised dual SIM, but definitely don't have dual SIM. And I've confirmed that with many people, including the carriers. So if you have any questions about this, this can be kind of tricky, how you want to set this up, how you want to utilize it. Definitely ask down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel because I'm always trying to put out useful content like this to help people with different things that I've had to deal with myself. And so if you want more videos like this, click subscribe. And I hope to see you back in another video soon here on State of Tech. Take care.